Full leveling episode two preview. So much blood. I wanted to watch this before the last episode, but I saw this comment right here. This ain't no preview. These are straight out spoilers. So I kind of just waited on it. I just want to check out if Mastar has anything good to say about the preview. Let's check it out. Solo leveling episode one shattered expectations. Fans did not expect it to be this good. We are. Actually, a lot of people are saying Soul Leveling Episode 1 was a letdown and that people were like, it, it just blue balled us. Where's the, you know, what's with the cliffhanger? Where's my hook? It was delivered in Episode 2, but yeah, I think a lot of people are glazing this series, but a lot of people I've heard also kind of just was kind of upset about They're it. in for a heck of a ride, so I'm really excited to talk about Episode 2 with you guys here and go through the next few chapters. Now, before... Bro, it's episode 2 preview. Are you going to talk about episode 2 already like Before this? Before I jump in on my episode 1 review, I got a couple things wrong. First, I said the creator of Solo Leveling died. That's incorrect. The 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 drawer, the author. No, no, the, the artist, right? Creator or author is still alive. Actually, the illustrator yeah. was the one who passed away. Unfortunately, he won't be able to see his beautiful creations come to life. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Jang Sung Rock. And I also got incorrect the chapter count that was in episode one. It was actually about four chapters contained the entire episode, meaning that we can fairly accurately predict in the next episode if we go through the next four chapters. And that's what we're going to do here today. Make okay. sure you guys subscribe, hit that notification button, and comment down below. Y'all know what to do. Give him some engagement, guys. Go like his video, sub to his channel. It's good to see that, you know, he'll just bite the bullet and say, hey, you made it. I made a mistake. I, these are the corrections. I wonder if Andy News will mention something like that in his next video, though. Your thoughts on solo leveling to boost the video in the algorithm. The very first episode of solo leveling established the world building. These portals to these kind of Dungeons and Dragons gateways opened 10 years ago. And with that, people start to gain superpowers. If you awaken... Little... Cr this guy has been reusing this same footage over and over. Is this gonna be the same shit? Because this repeated scene of them fighting and Cha Hain jumping around, he basically like copies the segment and basically pastes it over and over again, like five, six times while he talks, because it's actually smart. Because when you're making videos like this, what you should be doing, if you're like really trying to be, I don't, I don't know, if you're trying to be pristine, like a video essay writer or whatever, is to get scenes that match what you're saying. But does it really matter? What if you can just talk over the footage, right? Just have some fucking hype, hype scenes, copy paste like three or four of them repeatedly so you don't have to worry about synchronizing the visuals with what you're saying. So you copy paste and you just talk over it, which I think is really smart. I, I think it really is. Gained and gained a superpower, you again. Be given a rank depending on how strong you are. And in the very beginning of the episode, we get to see a bunch of S rank heroes completely decimating monsters that were destroying everyone else. So it's a similar fashion to One Punch Man, except for the fact that in solo leveling, once you awaken, you actually cannot get any stronger. You can improve your gear, which will help. Unless you get a main character icon. Sorry, the menu icon that appears saying, do you want to be a player? Yes. Come on, let's level. Fight, but you just simply can't improve your rank. That's when we get introduced to the main character, Sung Jin Woo, who is the weakest hunter in the world. He's an E rank. In every mission he goes on, he gets fatally injured, barely escaping with his life. He's trying to collect gems and artifacts to pay for his mother in the hospital. This is how the hunters make a living. They go through these dungeons, they defeat the dungeon, they get some magical items which they're able to sell. These magical items do various things like building weapons and armor, but they're also a clean energy source. So the main character, Sung, joins a little crew and they go through a D rank dungeon. After defeating the initial mobs, they get to a giant door where they face a threat that is far greater than the D rank that they were prepared for. I wonder what rank, you know, these monsters are. Because it's a double dungeon, so it's very obscure. And people are saying this thing is really important, so... I don't know. You would probably think that in terms of a grading scale, if it goes high as S or something beyond that, it's going to be probably around that area, right? When one of the hunters gets beheaded, sheer terror overwhelms the entire crew as they realize that the they are in that. some deep, you fucked deep up. trouble. Now, let's get into episode two. When they entered the boss chamber, they saw that there was this tablet with these three commandments. Damn, he really is just going straight into episode two. Like, I don't know. Like, he's just straight up showing webtoon stuff, so I'm glad that I kind of waited for this. Goddamn. First, worship the Lord. Second, praise the Lord. Mm. And third, prove your faith. 
Now, initially, they didn't think much of it, but after the first few deaths and they all start to panic, it turns out that these commandments are incredibly important, critically important, as they are rules for the dungeon. You see that this secret dungeon level is so high level that it has rules you have to follow in order to beat it. You can't just simply win with brute force. And the power of this secret dungeon is so high that even the B-rank healer is like freaking out. And this is a recurring theme that's going to happen. I don't think it's that she was scared. No, 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 no. I, I think this is a bad comparison to make. It's not the fact, like using her as a comparison to see, just to, just to prove how strong they are. No, no, no. Juhi was already a scaredy cat, right? She, it was explained in episode two that she's not good with shit like this. So it's not the fact that a B rank was scared. It's the fact that a B rank is here because she's already has a weak mental and is just scared of everything happened in the episode sheer terror as even the highest level heroes here in this dungeon group are completely panicking crying falling to the ground they they expect death this seems impossible for them and some of them attempt to actually flee but it doesn't turn and out too did. well for them. If you and run you to the did. door, the giant statues will slice you apart. And if you run around the room... Th this is less of a preview, more review. Yeah, this is the straight up. Just the, so, and he made another video with the review of the, of the episode. So it's really going to be interesting to see how he differentiates, you know, the content. But okay, I'm glad I saw this before the, you know, after watching it. Yes. The biggest statue, the boss, will fry you with his laser eyes. Now, this episode really gives you some character of the main character, Sung. Yes, he is weak, but he turns out to be quite the genius and being able to figure out what exactly is going on. What the That's the craziest thing. It's like, how did he contribute so much, huh? He is the weakest hunter, but technically everything he was doing here was just pure, just like intelligence, right? He was able to understand the threat with just his survival instincts, but he's also able to just like immediately like just say, hey, we got to just follow these commandments and, not, and everyone else is panicking. So it's like survival instinct. Of what may, I mean, you don't really need to nitpick on stuff like this, but it's like, how the fuck did he do it of all people? Well, it's not like he was going around doing crazy fighting, right? Like, I, I think that it fits whatever his, you know, character is supposed to be so far. The rules are and how they apply because these giant statues are not just simply killing random people they only attack when you try to escape or you do something you're not supposed to do so the first step praise the lord sung figures out very quickly that the lord is the biggest creepiest statue in there and by praising he means duck down because mm -hmm. if you're standing up over a certain level the giant laser beam will come and fry you so it's like don't make eye contact you kind of basically bow down right so that's like the first thing you got to do and then he was very very happy about that and we get the creepy smile he gets his whole crew to bow down and the statue's eyes the laser eyes kind of dissipate and they realize that these rules are important <laughs> but something creepy happens we get this sadistic it's that smile guys this smile has been pretty much just been spoiled yeah everybody's just been fucking using this over and over again before up leading up to soul leveling but this is an iconic smile thing everyone's waiting for it it's like the subarashi smile right big smile come out from the boss as soon as everyone kneels down this seems to activate phase two of the boss as it gets out of its chair and starts to walk around with these thundering steps the first rule was to worship the lord by bowing down below a now praise level, him let's say four feet and the second step is to pray to the lord so one of the heroes who's one it wasn't though, right? Cause it's, it says praise to the Lord or the God, but we thought that. So she started praying to the wrong fucking God. He just started. To, he just started, you know, praying to Jesus Christ. Jesus ain't here to save you. No, 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 no. This dude fucking just gets immediately squashed. But then the praising part is actually get each person over to each instrument, and then it starts playing a song, and then it kind of like. That's like praising the God some. That's pretty hard to fucking understand though. That was like really smart for him to figure out. Wearing a cross, he walks up and he's like, all right, like, let me give it a shot. And he pulls out his cross. He starts walking towards it, starts <laughs> chanting some prayers. Dumbass. Like this thing is God. And we see that this is not going to turn out too good for him as this giant godlike foot uh, squashes him pretty bad. <laughs> I'm really excited to see. So actually... The way Mr. Mastar just said, this is so was he praying to him right there? The way that he was talking, it, it, felt, it felt like um, his, his prayers, the words he was saying, sounded like it wasn't directed to the statue. 
I thought it was directed to Jesus Christ or some kind of God that he worshipped. So I thought that's what he was squashed here. And then I then said that, no, 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 you idiot. You're supposed to be praying to the statue. But technically, it was never about praying. It was about playing those instruments all in synchro together, right? So I'm a little confused on what happened here now, actually. See, that's animated. This makes everybody freak out and panic. They all start running because they, they, they know they're going to die. They, and some of them get sliced in half. Yo, the anime did this guy so dirty. In, in the webtoon, it didn't look as bad. Like, the webtoon, this is as much as they showed. The anime, they split, they got the cut, they split his fucking face. One of that, one side fucking went to the side, and the, and the blood pulled around his eyeballs. <laughs> Yo, they did this guy so dirty. This poor guy is you dead. and now you they dead. don't know what to do. There's incredibly powerful enemies. So this is insane. How is this a t episode two preview video? This is fucking insane. He's like, this guy was right. This ain't no preview. These are straight out spoiled. This is insane. Like, I, I, I guess like in the, in the game of YouTube, you want to be fast. You want to be early and decisive, huh? So like, yeah, I, I, I don't know if the trailer 2 PV, like the episode 2 PV actually showed all these different details happening. But holy fuck, I'm glad that I did not watch this before watching episode two. Surrounding the room with a giant boss monster in the middle coming towards them, stepping on them, attack on Titan style. But Sung, the E-rank hero, the lowest, weakest hero, putting the pieces together, sees that some of these statues actually have instruments instead of weapons. Mm -hmm. And if you get close to one of them, the instrument starts playing music, and it appears that this is a safety zone. So everyone has to scatter to these safety statues, unfortunately not many many of them can make it. And Sung, the main character, he makes a mistake thinking that one of these statues has a musical instrument, but it's actually- Yo, that was crazy, man. And the entire time, the soundtrack was playing from Hiroyuki Sano, and the way that the instruments start to play with the actual soundtrack of the anime, like, synchro together, that was some beautiful shit. I think that's probably one of the best moments in the anime episode. During when the instruments were, like, the, when, when we were trying to get to the instruments, and they're like, wait, no! It's not, there, two of you are supposed to be there. It's only supposed to be one. And then you got the shield slamming down and the soundtrack's going fucking crazy. I think that was one of the most like hype moments in the episode. Actually a giant shield and this thing is going to smash his leg off. Literally. So the B-rank healer comes over and tries to help him, but he's in critical <laughs> condition. In fact, there's at this point, there's only six out of 17 heroes left. Six out of 17 alive. And I, I made too many fucking foot jokes. I'm, no, I'm glad I made those jokes, man. Every time someone's like legs got cut off, sometimes shoes came out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, someone should loot those shoes. Even here, I was like, that's nah, fine, guys. He's poor. He Now he doesn't have to afford so many pairs of shoes, but... The whole part of the getting the instruments and lighting those statues up, I felt like I was part of a fucking raid. Like, like you ever play MMOs and you're in voice call and there's a bunch of fucking idiots that don't know what they're doing? And wait, two of you aren't supposed to be there. It's only supposed to be one of you idiots. Like, the, this, the, the desperateness, the desperation, the overall direness of the situation combined with the fucking boss mechanics that everyone's like talking about. I felt like I was in the fucking boss raid, man. 11 people have died extremely quickly, and two of those six are gravely injured. So it appears that they're in really bad shape. They figured out two of the three commandments, but they've lost the vast majority of their crew. This activates phase three as this altar bursts out of the middle of the ground. So the first step was to worship the Lord. The second one was to pray to the Lord. Prove and the your third faith. was to prove your faith. This is when Sung asked the other heroes to carry him over to the altar. And when they get there, these strange blue and orange fires light up around the altar. Now Which is so interesting. There's blue and orange fires, right? The blue fire was the timer for you to basically survive. And then, what, what was it? It was like a quest, right? It was like, um, I, I forget the exact name of the quest, but you clear it by staying there until the blue fire runs out. Then you get to become a player of a game, I guess. The orange fires were basically for each person in there. So as soon as one person ran out the room, each fire went out. 
I wonder what would have happened, though, if everybody stayed together, right? Would everyone have received the powers? No spoilers. Now, they talk about why they have to beat this dungeon, and it's because the dungeons only stay open for seven days. If nobody has defeated the dungeon within seven days, that means that all of the monsters within it can come out of the portal. But being that as it was a D-ranked dungeon, the higher-level heroes decided it wasn't worth their time. So these low-rank heroes have to stop this dungeon now, otherwise this giant titan, this stone god titan thing, will come come out and start to destroy humanity. straight up attack on titan now, as they're in this yep. altar trying to figure out how to accomplish the third task people start to panic and freak out the doors open and one of the heroes a female is actually able to bolt and leave the first hero to that's right finally the gal with the white lipstick she fucking lived let's go like escape but this is actually a problem because oh it was her right there too huh pretty cool okay as she escapes one of the fires that is surrounding them goes, goes off out. and the door and closes starts to theorize what exactly is happening the red flames appear are based on a number of people mm -hmm. and as soon as she left one of those red flames went out when all the red flames appeared the door opened so it appears that there's some sort of countdown timer they're all supposed to stay in the middle and have faith that they'll beat the dungeon but if people panic and they leave then everybody's gonna die and so they're all supposed to work together but the sheer terror is in panic from the heroes is causing them to right and the girl too was like we're supposed to stare at the statue because if you stare look at the statue directly make eye contact they stop moving and they don't close in on you right but she couldn't handle the pressure from making the eye contact and just fucking left and you know what i feel like i would have done the exact same thing no i wouldn't i wouldn't have been as brave as her to leave first no 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 i would have been the second guy out I would have used her as test to see, all right, is she going to make it? Is she going to live? Oh, she lived? I'm fucking out immediately. That's how my brain works, man. Just abide by the rules of the game, and this is going to cause problems. I think this is where the next episode is going to end. Probably the door opens and one person escapes, and that'll mm. probably be the end of episode two. So I think the finale of the initial... But like, bro, you're supposed to talk about episode two preview. You just talked about the webtoon content. <laughs> he basically just like, in the beginning, you know what he said? He basically said, you know, I can basically understand the pacing of the episode. It's going to be this amount of chapters. That's what he said in the video, right? So then he basically used that logic to look ahead in the webtoon and try to guess about what episode two is going to be. But I thought this is a fucking episode two preview video, not an entire fucking summary of the episode before it even came out. The arc here is going to end in episode three. But yeah, this is going to be incredibly exciting. You know, the voice acting is going to be really good. I mean, yes. you're going to have this map. The voice acting from Sung Jin Moo, one of the best parts was all the screamings. Yes, but I think it was the realization when he actually is, is like left alone and he realizes that he's been betrayed. Maybe not betrayed, but like the mask off, right? He starts saying, I have a fucking family too. Why does it matter about you? Like I did all this shit too. What about me, right? That selfishness, what I think is totally justified. It comes out and it's so human. Even the voice acting from everyone else saying, I have a family. I want to live and escape, right? That old man crying. It's so normal. It's so, it's such a normal human reaction. Something about it felt so compelling. The guy is just like fucking crying in tears and saying, I have a family. And by the way, that's when you should mention that you have a family. That's why that guy fucking lived and Green Puffy Jacket Family Man died. Ask with people like in sheer terror as they're getting squashed and sliced and melted and all this stuff. It's really exciting. I mean, if you like Attack on Titan, you're probably going to like this. If you like One Punch Man, you're probably going to like this. It's just such a great, fantastic story. Solo leveling, especially when it gets to like chapter 40. And you'll know what I'm talking about if you've read the story. What happens like, then? There's no going back once you get to chapter 40. I don't want to spoil Oh, are we chapter 40. So he said about four chapters per episode. And some people are saying like as soon as it gets to like episode 10, she get hyped, right? I think people are saying episode 10 should be the really good shit, anything, right? But, but we should. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything he says. <laughs> After summarizing the entirety of episode 2. <laughs> four days ago. <laughs> before episode 2 came out. But hey, I mean the guy's got bills to pay. He wanted to be early, right? Was this a bait? If you ignore the parts where he spoils episode two before watching it, I mean, if you, if, I mean, I enjoy watching it afterwards, but a little bit dangerous. So I will hold off on Mr. Mastar's episode preview videos, but I'll still watch him. Please go like his videos, sub to his channel. Solo leveling, it's pretty fucking hype, and everyone is hyping up chapter forty, episode ten. We'll get there. We'll get there.